you lived here, right? Yeah, I lived here. I lived just down the street there, in, um, just, just near Stockwell Tube Station. There's a little street that comes off called Lansdowne Way. I lived there when I first moved to London. Um, and I used to work at Slam. Um, I'd work like Monday to Friday one week, and then Monday, Saturday next week, and, and then like, take a Wednesday off or something. So on my Wednesdays, I'd come down here real early, like 9 o'clock, and skate for a couple of hours on my own, and just, just go round and round. And, and what was good is you could almost, because there was nobody here, and you could kind of skate with almost like with blinkers on, like almost like having headphones on, but without having headphones on. And you, and you could just skate, and you no, you could almost skate with your eyes closed, and know you weren't going to bump into anyone or get in anyone's way, and you would just it sounds really kind of like a bit hippie-ish, I guess, but you can just like really feel it, and it it would just I don't know, it just always felt amazing. Like every day when we were at Slam, he'd he'd uh, he'd go to skate at Southbank on his lunch break, and he worked out the exact time that it would take from leaving the door at Slam, going skating down the road, going across the bridge, and going to Southbank. How long he could skate for? I think he worked it out, he could skate for 35 minutes or something like that. And it'd take seven minutes to get down there and 10 minutes to get back or whatever it took, you know. I would, I would just get to about 11.30, I'd be like, guys, none of you guys are bothered, I'm gonna take the first lunch break. Um, and I'd just grab my board and occasionally put on some headphones, even though I used to wear headphones occasionally, and just whiz across the river. It's like literally down the hill, um, down through some of the back lanes here and then pass, down past the Lion King, down whatever that is, Bow Street or whatever that is, and then uh, across Waterloo Bridge to South Bank, and it takes like six or seven minutes, you can really hammer it. He was saying about the shop and the seven minutes and the lunchtime skates at South Bank and how he'd try and get everybody else to come and yeah. want to be like, nah, you're all right. Yeah, right. no, you're all right, I'll just go and sit in Frank's and have a cheese sandwich. <laughs> Did that, you draw the map? To the to South Bank for the insole of the Nike shoe. Yes, I drew all I drew all those maps. Um, and it said hell, hell. But hell like was, hell was across the street there. there was um, that like the kind of extreme mall? Um, yeah, the, across the street from Slam, it, um, there's there's a place called it's called Thomas Neal Center, and basically it, it always had like the worst kind of extreme God knows what. It had like a billabong store in there and like all kinds of things. Now it's got like a super dry store, like so it's obviously the most mainstream, like kind of blandest, like not even middle, like semi-middle class apparel, that like everything's just cool. I don't know if it used to be worse or better, it used to be more variations of worse back in the day. So we used to call that hell, and on that map it just says hell. If you see that on, the, on that insole of that Nike dump, I did that. I think there was a map to Stockwell maybe on the other one. So what was heroin like before Pullman started? Oh man, it was amazing. I had no idea what I was doing. It was like this tiny thing and just me with like so much passion and just wanting to do like something. And um, I was like, well, that guy's good. We'll, we'll get him on like Rough Mike, you know, some kid who skates Stockwell. And then Snowy um, didn't have a board sponsor and, and sort of I talked to him about this thing I was going to do. So we had like Snowy and Rough Mike and then I suppose me because like... I had this video camera that someone gave me and I I was filming other people and then at the same time I'd like get a clip with it. So out of nowhere I kind of had this like weird video part. So I guess that was like the first, the th first three people were like me, Snowy and Rough Mike. And then we put the video out, good shit. And then it was after that that like Pullman called me up and was like, listen, um, I kind of like what you're doing with that company. Like, is there any chance I could ride for it? Well, Pullman was on Foundation, and he loved Foundation. He loved it. Pullman was just kind of like, he was just getting a bit bummed on just being like on a, kind of like a distributor deal, or whatever. In classic Pullman fashion, he just fully focused in on like, oh, what the heroin, and heroin's amazing, and you know, and, uh, and everything. I think he, I think he missed Foundation, but I think he was stoked to kind of like help Foz and you know, ride for Foz's company and stuff like that. So, um, Foz was like, you know, do you want to, I need a pro for this company, you, you know, it's, just, it's got to a point where it's a legitimate skateboard company, we need professionals, Chopper's going to be pro, um, you know, he said, do you want to kind of put yourself on the line here, like put yourself out there as a professional skateboarder? And I thought, well, I don't know if I weigh up against everybody else as a professional skateboarder, but 
I'm down to put myself on the line and try and behave like a professional skateboarder and, and, and film parts and, and, you know, hopefully inspire someone out there to buy a heroin board, which is, you know, the whole point of being a pro skateboarder, I guess, is, you know, to put your name on a board and someone will buy it because your name's on it. And it, you know, I, I was quite quite self-deprecating about it. I really didn't think anybody was going to buy a board with my name on it, but they, they sold really well. So, um, that was that was really cool and a little bit almost a little bit embarrassing. I was like, I don't deserve this at all. Like I, you know, I, I really didn't think I deserved it. But and that was a big deal. Like turning Pullman Pro was like a, a huge deal. We were we were both like, what are we doing? Like, what is going on? Like, is this going to work? Like, you know, and sort of like opening ourselves up for like loads of criticism. But in the end of the day, like, who really cares? You know. I remember going out first day. I got a heron board. Sprayed heroin, I was all proud of it. Sprayed heroin on the grip tape, went up with Wig Whirling to gas banks um, and shot this pretty rad photo. I, I really like this photo, it's like a little Ollie over the, the little tight hip of gas banks. And Wig shot it through the railings and I've got like a heroin long sleeve up the, on that had like the, the slashed wrist screen printed on it. It was like horrific, so good. Um, and I went out and shot that photo. I was like, wow, I, all of a sudden I feel like part of something really legit. Whereas I felt like I was part of something good at Foundation, but all of a sudden I was like right at the forefront of like a new company. I still think people need to work for stuff. I, and and I, th I felt what Pullman had. I felt like that he put video parts out and done interviews and people knew who he was. But it was, a, it was at a funny time. It was at a time that everybody had to like sort of, I don't know, had to prove themselves. I mean, they do nowadays even, but it was just like, oh, well, that guy's kick flipped down that, you can't do that. That guy's done that, you can't do that. And it was that was really just first beginning to happen. Thinking back, I suppose, to that time, uh, Blueprint was, you know, it was everything in British skating. I mean, it was, you know, what, what, all, what you know, Dan was doing with the videos and the graphics and stuff, and obviously what the team was, you know, doing skating-wise. You know, Blueprint was, uh, you know, it was, it was bringing and showcasing high performance British skateboarding at a time when it never really is never had that. So and it, you know, and it was amazing at that point. And heroin was a kind of it was like almost like a, the, the almost the, like the antithesis of that. You know, not 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 to dumb. It wasn't dumbing down skateboard because there was plenty of really amazing stuff out there too. And it wasn't dumbing it down or dumbing down the, the, the skill level. It was just making it more accessible for the kids who weren't going to be the best skateboarders ever, you know, but who, who had a passion. So that the passion was stronger than the ability, you know, um, which suited me fine because that's got a lot more passion than ability. <laughs> It's that thing of yeah, it's it's it, you know he's not like a like a high performer. He wasn't a, like a high performance pro, but it's I, and I think there's always it's rad to have like pro, you know like skaters or pro skaters who their skating is like accessible to people. Do you know what I mean? And uh, and their skating is being is showcased because they've got like you know like a rad style or their trick selection is super you know sort of uh, different or whatever. You know, I think Chris has got that. Yeah. In a time when skateboarding was quite elitist and there was there was a lot of emphasis on being really, really good or filming things the best, um, which is great. If if you're a kid who isn't super good at skateboarding, or or you're just getting into filming, then you need something a bit more um, inclusive. You know, a little bit more inviting. And, and heroin is good. Like a kid can watch a heroin video and be like, watch these guys dicking about, like just you know, kicking their board about and just doing silly stuff. And you could go out that day and like, and, and try that trick and maybe learn a trick that day, like you saw some old fart doing in a video, you know? Whereas if you watch Pretty Sweet, like, I don't think there's a single trick in that video I can do now, and, and I don't have a week to learn any of them, you know? So, um, maybe that's just a more of a reflection of me, but... <laughs> this is my board came out, like, I don't know how the hell this ever happened. Um, and I went with Wig. I just wanted to shoot this. As you can see, this is a Chalky Ledges. Um, and I just said, let's go shoot this. I, we were, me and Foz were adamant that we shot the photo for the ad, the, the, the photo for the ad would be riding the board that it advertised because you see so many adverts for like a board or a shoe where the guy isn't even wearing the shoe. It's, it's changed these days, but back, back in the day it wouldn't, it wouldn't even be like that. So I was like, we set this board, um, this is like this first heroin graphic that the dude's like stabbing himself, hating on himself, a bit like me, I guess. Um, Went and shot this no, straight no comply off this ledge. That's quite cool. And went and shot that with wig, I believe. Yeah, it was wig. Of course it was. Do you think this place was like the spiritual home of heroin? Yeah, for sure. Like 
Boz, Boz pretty much lived here um, as far as skateboarding goes. Yeah, the, you know, the first like the first video like good shit is like lots and lots of guys dicking about here with like Simon True and Blind Ollie and Foz and then footage of like Bama Jera doing crazy stuff and Ruben and, and all of the people that Foz knew, like a lot of good dudes. Um, well I think it was, I think Foz must have spent so much time here before before I was involved in heroin. It, it, it just, yes, yeah, intrinsically part of heroin at the start. I think. And it always, every every heroin video that's been out has referenced this place. Um, and rightly so, I guess. So, 